They, they literally stumbled upon this property completely by accident in 1983. And they, they jumped the fence and had a look and they fell in love with it straight away. It's, a, it's, it's a quite isolated from other winemaking regions where, um, and shortly after they purchased the property, uh, there was a catastrophic bushfire event in 1983 called Ash Wednesday. And they weren't even sure where the fires were in relation to their property. Um, but it was essentially a disused paddock. So this country where we are um, is potato country. So there's a lot of Italian migrants came here and planted potatoes. It's very fertile, red soils, deep volcanic loam. Um, and it's about at the top of our hill, we're on a, a beautiful natural amphitheater with uh, 300 meters altitude. We're possibly not the highest vineyard in the Yarra Valley, but we're certainly um, one of the coolest sites. Uh, we tend to ripen a lot later than everyone else and we have an elevated rainfall. So our rainfall uh, uh, for Gembrook, which used to be posted on the, on the post office uh, door, was the 44 year average is around 1200 millimeters of rain every year. So that's very high. And it's probably eight or 900 mils for the rest of the Yarra Valley, depending on where you are. So it's substantially higher. And so, and back in the early 80s, there was no history of what would grow well on a site such as ours. There was obviously no need for irrigation with such high rainfall. And so with the uh, recommendations of my um, dad's friendship circle, he planted Sauvignon Blanc initially. That was the very first thing we planted. And it, and it did really well here. So we make Sauvignon Blanc, we make Chardonnay, and sometimes we make Chardonnay two ways. And then we make um, the Pinot, Pinot Noir. So the Sauvignon Blanc, uh, we, we, until very recently, we had three blocks of Pinot Noir up until 2021. Now we have two blocks, but they're picked on different dates depending on, on their flavor, their acid and sugar balance, but really their flavor and also what the prevailing weather is doing at, at harvest because the, the, the weather always gets in the, in the way of a good time. And then we, um, we bring in a re refrigerated container to the winery during harvest. So we can concentrate just on picking and then we can put the fruit into a refrigerated container overnight and then process it the next day. Or we can process it the same day if, if it's cool conditions. But really we like the fruit to be nice and fresh. Um, and then we, everything's hand picked on the property. We crush and press the Sauvignon Blanc and then we allow it to settle uh, in tank for about five or six days naturally, no enzymes added, just a little bit of sulfur at the crusher. And then we rack the juice into old, old barrels 500 litre barrels, 300 litre barrels. We only use French oak in the winery. And then the wines uh, start fermenting spontaneously. We don't add any yeast. But it's, it's a pretty fun way of making wine and it does give you a very different flavor profile, which is really what I wanted to make sure that there was a distinct difference between the JKM and the IJM and the General Kill Pinot Noir that we've been making for 40 years. Mm -hmm.